Uh, Martin Luther Christian Church is present in nations from every continent of the planet. Church from countries in the three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, connected by the same doctrine and the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from every part of the world participate on the same service, jointly, on the same body, and on the same spirit. Through the system of transmission, the brethren from the Church Maranatha of the entire planet leave a moment of unity and fellowship like the Hebrews on the departure from Egypt and the disciples with the Lord Jesus just before his death on the cross of Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the eternal gospel and by the message of the soon return of the Lord Jesus. Not to greet our brethren and the sisters from Brazil and abroad. And from the region of Cariacica, town of Espírito Santo, which is this event and seminar of the women and also Sunday school. In this time, we invite the brethren to kneel down, reminding that after the plea, the sister will remain kneeling down for the laying the prayer with laying of hands from the pastors. And after the prayer, we are going to sing Lord's Rescue Me. Uh, you need to be, be standing while you sing this song. The Lord will pray in, my, in a mighty way during this, this period of praise. Glory to God. We plead, Lord, for the power that is in the blood of the Lord Jesus, who has forgiven us and the deliverance for our lives, Lord. Be with us this moment, reproach, uh, uh, tightness, lippiness, concerns of the soul that may hinder fellowship with you, Lord. We ask for the power of the blood of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. The bread may remain kneeling down and the pastors with the laying of the hands. My beloved servants, you are kneeling down before the throne of the one who lives forevermore. 
and I tell you that I have called you my servants for a special blessing because I have determined that each one will carry with them into their homes, into their church, a slice, a special slice of the living bread that comes down from heaven to give you life and life in abundance. And this bread will be for you a food that will bring an awakening, revival, brokenness of heart, and renew and refreshing. And as you sing the song in praise to my name, I will walk amongst you and I will operate healings. I will baptize with my Holy Spirit. I will be operating deliverance in the homes and I will give visions, spiritual singing, uh, tongues, and my name will be glorified. And I'm present with you. Glory to the church standing. The church will be standing to sing the song. My sin are rescued on the cross for your love. And from death, sorrow, and sorrow, you deliver, deliver, you deliver me, you Lord. Come and lit up a flame in my chest without end. I adore you and I plead to you Oh Jesus inhabit in me. If I hesitate and falter and if I hear the voice of the tempter You guide me and help me and you turn me into a victorious person. Come and light up a living flame in my chest forever. I adore you. I always plead to you, O oh Jesus, inhabit in me. Redeemed, the redeemed has life, my soul in your love. With regard, I recognize how much I owe to you, O Lord. Came, I come and light up this flame in my chest forever. I adore you. And I always implore, O oh Jesus, inhabit in me. Go to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go to God. Blessed be your name, Lord.
come and light up this flame in my chest. forever and I adore you and I always implore to you Lord oh Jesus inhabit in me glory to God hallelujah Lord bless be your name glory to God the brethren can sit down A brother. Our word for you is just five minutes just to remind you of the prayer of Hannah. Hannah was a woman, was an example of a woman of prayer. We have many sisters, they are an example. Hannah prayed to the Lord and she cried abundantly, made a vow saying, Your servant. I will give to the Lord every day, all the days of my life. My brethren, this prayer um, is a woman is afflicted and anguished. The woman, uh, he, her husband com understood her, her, her pain. But she knew that she wanted uh, a male son, and a prayer has its objective. How many impossible things uh, God has already, uh, how many prayers God has answered? In the region of, uh, there is a, a pastor that had a pancreatic cancer, and uh, sister prayed, uh, "Don't take, don't take this pastor. Take me, because he has a lot, a lot of stuff to do." And I said to that sister, "How, how, come you have this kind of prayer?" When uh, this pastor went to the hospital for an operation in a few days, she, uh, the sister also got sick, but she got better as well. God is a God of wonders. The same miracles that happened in the past happens today. Everything that we achieve is through prayer. Uh, uh, prayer is part of the doctrine. The great women of the Bible, the great men as well, uh, were men of prayer. You see the mother of John Wesley, the wife of Martin Luther, women that in prayer they broke many barriers. We have to remember one of the things, since our topic is very quick, I'm going to remind the sister one thing, that the prayer, the Holy Spirit wants to participate in prayer, but what hinders our prayer, do you know what it is? Is bitterness. If you have bitterness, bitterness against someone else, and you are not going to move ahead. If you have a problem with your brother and sister, and your brother has a problem with you, go and, and resolve the problem with your brother and sister. There are many things that hinder uh, a prayer to come to the Lord. It's the sin, doubt, and the wrong uh, objective. It's pray for your own selfish interest and greedy. And Proverbs also says that if you do not help the poor, when you plead to the Lord, you are not going to be answered as well. So we're going to see here the following. One thing that is difficult, here the sisters, they have a, a, a feeling that is, comes to the surface more easily. There is, there is a person that is wound that is hard to be able to conquer. And the prophet says that it's easier to conquer a city, walled city, than a heart that, uh, that is being wounded. And offended. There's a, an obvious many brethren have lost the blessing because of this, and the mind it has uh, has you know the steel um, carts that the can Canaanites had a chariots, the steel chariots. When the 900 chariots came down the mounts, it was impossible to overcome this army. And there are many times uh, carts are being lodged in your mind. The Lord wants to operate a blessing in your, in your mind. The Lord wants to deliver for this bitterness, this oppression, this pain. You, need, you may even need to do a fasting, but from this day forward, the Lord is going to deliver you from this problem. And from this day forward, we're going to have a new life. You cannot be a bitter woman suffering with 
with sickness abandoned this. Uh, a mother abandoned three daughters and went out to live her own uh, life. And she, uh, and when she was in the hospital, she brought her. Uh, she called her sister, her, her daughters, but one of the daughters didn't forgive her. And it's easy to forgive, but forgive is not. It's not to forget something. It's stop uh, criticizing someone. We're in a time that we need this, and the mind. The people are afflicted because your mind is like this. You may not even forget the pain, the betrayal, the wound that somebody placed in your heart, but you're going to be delivered so that Jesus can operate, remove what is hindering, and the Holy Spirit is going to operate here. We know that this problem, the disciple here in Luke 17, 4 says the following, Jesus said, if your brother comes seven times a day to ask forgiveness, forgive him seven times. And the disciple said, Lord, add faith to us. They didn't ask faith to pray for the sick or to heal someone or to evangelize. But for this, they said, God, give us faith. But Jesus wants this from our lives. If you cannot forgive, you get sick. There are many sisters that are sick. And in fact, if you, if you have a problem with someone else, the pastor, uh, there is an orientation from the presbytery and I'll remove them both. So they, they, neither of them will be preaching or participating on the women's service. The pastor says, if you, you're, you're not going to find any reason to forgive. If you're looking for a reason to forgive, you're not going to find, but you need to forgive. Uh, my brother, Apostle Paul said, carry one another, withstanding one another. Withstanding someone is carrying someone. Uh, she, because she is very difficult, but uh, you need to carry her. If, because you are going to heaven, she is going to heaven as well. You need to move forward in faith. Don't look to men, look to the Lord. But there is one thing that is true. Apostle John, he speaks about the apostasy of the faith. If I was reading the other day, brother and sister, and a brother also, their friend on Facebook, but they are enemy in the church. They accept the friend, but do not see the profile of the person. You cannot be a friend of people like this. The Lord isn't even speak about people that has the apostasy of the faith. They, they, they deny the doctrine. Go astray from this person. At this time, go apart from this person. The obstacles are many in the prayer, but here are, if you need a deliverance from the Lord this afternoon here, uh, no, it is a prayer of confession. If you say, Lord, uh, really I have a problem, I have a bitterness with that brother or sister or that pastor or the usher, deacon, but I want a deliverance tonight. But Jesus has already forgiven you. Glory to God. So we're going to sing a song. I found a great love, this, this love that healed any pain and forgives us. of the heels and the pains. This love that heals any wound, old wounds. This love that delivers.
What a guy. Receive, therefore, my servant, the blessing that I cause to fall upon you. My balm is already upon your lives. So rejoice in me. Praise the name of your God. Still in this day, I will manifest in you my glory, my grace, my power will be perfected in your lives. So rejoice and adore your God. You may be seated. Well, my brethren, my brothers and sisters, Peace of the Lord. We are very happy for being here, gathered with so many sisters, servants of God, that answer to another call, another invitation, and this brings great comfort to our hearts and stimulate and strengthen us, strengthen our faith, because we are seeing what is uh, an expression of a body, what we have been preaching for 50 years and saying and now exercising is for us, it's very important. The time is very short for what we are going, everything that we will be dealing with today here. However, we're speaking to the entire country and also the world. In a few minutes, we are going to enter in, into a connection with a group that is already gathered in England and other part of Europe and also Central America and United States. In fact, a large part also Africa and others, this is a topic that naturally will be of the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to complement this in every country and every location. But what matters to us today is to say that the season that the, this meeting that has that happens here, there's another so there's another room that is already full. We have Carapina, Vila Velha, another location in Brazil. And I don't know if this is uh, an image from us here. If possible, we're going to show image from other places. And the entire Brazil is connected with us. But I don't know if the sisters from they understand the moment in which we are living. Normally, people think that they want to bring benefits to society, like if it was sort of a requirement that you, you make. We're going to give this in order for you to come to church. We're offering you this in order to attract new Christians, and that's not what our intention. What we're doing today is the result of an operation of the Holy Spirit bring our awareness to our people as a body, as a family. And as a family, we are feeling the need to take care of our children. The world is out there, ready to destroy everything, everything that was, every good did. Because in fact, there is an inversion of all the values, without exception. Here we have spoken about the dark cloud that came upon the world, the world lives off of emotions, the institutions are moved by emotions, and that's normal. But we need to show to our, our loved ones the moment in which you are living, bring clarity so our people may be able to discern better the position that the church is taking at this moment, when in fact we are living a moment, a special moment in the economy of God, that is the time where the door of grace will close. During this time, at this time, the, the 
this door, we're closed. We have no illusion with the world. There is no reason for us to get. Um, uh, the world is like that. We have nothing against the world or the people. Absolutely, we are, we are not better than anyone. But this, pe our people, we are going to do everything that we can so that our children, the ones who are going to replace us, the ones who are going to be ahead of the church, we don't know until when. But we know that we need to prepare our church for tomorrow. Our children our grandchildren, relatives. We need to leave something for them. We're going to leave something for them. See our sisters here. But now we're going to address the sisters here. What the Lord is placing at our disposal here. Firstly, we have an, an organization as a church, something that no one else has. Why? Because we made a declaration to the entire world. Jesus is at the doors. We received this week a request from the government of the state that trumpet and feats may be repeated there on the palace. Naturally, the, it was a room for 700 people. It was a request from the government so that we, we would schedule a day because they were interested in this. He is probably bringing people and friends and relatives something that was interested in. We are seeing the possibility that it would take place. But when a few discover what we are doing from this moment forward as a work of the Holy Spirit, as our need, many are going to try to imitate us. And the difference is in that we are a body in the entire country. And there are a few that even want to imitate us, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that the good things that need to be imitated, they are isolated case, that church, small groups that don't have any impact and and what is necessary it is an awareness and today we're going to start a couple of topics with a sister topics that have been spoken of in the past we have a couple of institutions there even inside of the church that are being organized like the group of uh, brethren there they have the capabilities they have uh, um, university life, they, they are scientists, they do research in all over Brazil and also the world. Have a group of men and women that have the ability to say what is science and to say what is faith. It is in fact, it's true that when we speak about science, people are worried are we worried about changing our direction? We're not changing any direction. We're saying that science is one thing and faith is another thing. You can know about science and go deep in science. There's nothing to do with faith. And you can have faith without needing science. Ideally, is that you understand what is science and what is faith. And this, uh, you need to give limits to each one. And to this day, Christianity have, has not been able to do, and we are have been able to do this. We, what, what I say, we and the Holy Spirit have been able to do this because of the revelation. In this last 50 years, the Lord has brought to us the information that were necessary so that this church, with their consistency that it has, may bring to the world we have just a handful of people that we don't need to go on the streets to shout. We are shouting everywhere. We are speaking about our faith, about our testimony, about our stand of what we are and want to continue to be serving the Lord as servants of God that we are. And see now, on this afternoon then, we're going to have a couple of topics that are of relevance to each one of us have two teachers that are researchers of universities that came here because of the group of science and faith and from this moment forward we we'll always have in our meetings a few aspects that are going to be placed about science and faith doesn't matter the degree of knowledge doesn't matter doesn't matter the degree of uh, uh, 
school that you have. We all understand this, but what was brought here is related to the top that was brought this last Wednesday. We have been able to reach the teaching of instruments, the, tu the children are learning how to play instruments. And we have been able to achieve also the work that has been done with people that are deficient, the deaf, blind, and there are people that mute, blind, and deaf. And now you ask, how are you going to preach for someone that has this kind of deficiency? Today we have people in our midst that are specialized. Now imagine, a blind, deaf, and mute being able to understand the message of salvation. This was a great advance. This is becoming in our part of our routine here. Now our greatest concern is with the education of our children when it comes to the minimal understanding of organization and method. We're not going to speak about this. We have here Pastor Julio that uh, is part of this area. He is highly prepared um, and high degree level. And in fact, his case, he has an, another level. He is uh, give uh, support to uh, the government in, in the state and outside the state about the topic. And in a few minutes, he's going to give his opinion since our time is short about the work that's being done placed at the disposal of, of the entire church in Brazil and abroad. I would like to say to the brethren that we have had conversations with the people that are responsible for this of this need of the church and that the understanding that we need to have to insert it, to put it in practice as soon as possible. So we're going to have a day of the week in which the teachers are going to receive the information and bring that information to the class once a month. We need to, uh, how to organize, why do you organize, there's a method for everything. Uh, I'm not going to touch on the subject because this is being more than understood. The need of the children and also the people, our sisters. Marcia Mendes, she's here. She's going to bring a few aspects which they are foundation so that every sister may understand what will be done and how it can be done. We're not going to speak about this. We also have the great concern today to bring a certain bring certain topics that are related to the sensibility and inclusion for person or people with deficiency that are, they are having problems in our church in the state of São Paulo has shown that 6% of our children with deficiency have been added last year, more. And every year, the number of our children with deficiency grows. And we, we are getting prepared in order to give this teaching on the classes on Sunday school, and it was observed an interesting topic from the part of São Paulo. They made a research whether when, whenever there was a class of deficient children, with children there were had no deficiency, and there was another class which was not mixed. It was normal only children with no deficiency, and they noticed that the class where there are deficient children, the children that don't have any deficiency, were perform better and and uh, perform better than the the class that had no deficiency it is an amazing uh, information we are not have not been able to deal with the world that is out there a child that is coming the ch child does not see this everyone has in the family we want to give a special treatment for them when i'm going to stop on this we have also uh, we're preparing uh, a treatment they're going to give special to the elderly. There are people that are 70, 80 years of age. They cannot just be standing still. They're going to do what is 
what we do in this in the United States. You come to every institution, we have men and women that are older than 80 years on the direction in the in, in the direction of the institution to volunteer work. My brethren, we are aggregating the values that we have to this great work that the world do, does not know, but will know if they want. We're not worried about the world. We're worried about our worried about our people in the world. Our journey is coming to the end. I'm going to stop here, and I just want to say that we're going to leave a little room, a little break here. It's a little warm here. The sister, we're going to walk a little bit, and we're going to come back in the period that we're going to have in 10 minutes. We're going to come back. So let's see if we are able to do this, since we have to fulfill a time regarding the message that's going to be transmitted to outside the country because the time here is not different it's different from what is there so they are making an e effort to take advantage of the time that we have here so we are going to be here comfortably what now we're going to sing a song and you stand and you can go out you feel comfortable to take a walk